Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to knit the Breezy Morning Cowl. So this cowl is very, very simple to make. It's made of basically a rectangle. So if you can knit a rectangle, then you can make this cowl. It's very simple. And it also knits up very quickly because we're using a pretty thick, bulky yarn. So the first thing you're going to need for this project is the free written pattern, which you will find by clicking the link in the description box below that will take you to the free written pattern on my blog. And you can also purchase a large print ad free printable PDF version of the pattern in my Ravelry store. So here's basically what you're going to need for this project. Um, you're going to need some yarn, obviously. This is the uh, December Knit Crate yarn from 2018. It's a number five bulky weight. So I'm using number five bulky weight yarn. Now you can um, modify the pattern and use a different yarn weight if you want. You'll just need to adjust um, the stitch count of the rows or how many stitches you cast on to make it the correct width according to the gauge of whatever yarn you want to use. But the pattern is written for bulky weight yarn. And I also have some US size 10 and a half knitting needles. They're six and a half millimeters. These are my Knit Picks Caspian straight needles. So you'll also need a button. This one is about one and one eighth inches in diameter. You'll need some scissors. You'll need a measuring tape to check your gauge and to measure the size of the finished rectangle. And you'll also need a yarn needle or blunt tapestry needle. You'll need actually two. One with a very large eye to accommodate the thickness of the bulky yarn. And you'll need a thinner one for sewing on the button. But what I don't, the one thing that I don't have here um, at the moment that you will also need is you're going to need some thinner yarn, like a sport weight or a fingering weight yarn. Um, scraps are fine, but you're just going to need a little bit of a thinner yarn, or you can use sewing thread if you want, to sew the button on because this yarn is very thick and it will not fit through the holes in my button. Now, if you have a button that has really big holes in it and this bulky yarn will fit through it, then you won't need that. But if you're using a button with regular holes in it, then you're going to need a little bit of some thinner yarn or, like I said, some sewing thread and a sewing needle if you want to attach your button. So we're going to begin with a long tail cast on. And this is a very simple cast on to work. Um, you can use a different cast on if you would rather. Um, it doesn't have to be stretchy or anything. It just needs to be a basic cast on. I'm going to use the long tail. So with my size 10 and a half or six and a half millimeter needles, I'm going to cast on 32 stitches with my bulky yarn. And as always, this very first slip knot that we put on the needle counts as our first stitch. Alright, so I have my 32 stitches cast onto the needle. They are all kind of bunched up a little bit, but once we start knitting this, this is actually going to be wider than um, what it looks like right now. And um, you'll also want to take note that the gauge measurement is given after blocking. So you're going to want to block your gauge swatch first because the fabric kind of opens up a little bit more when it's blocked than when it's not blocked. So you'll need to measure your gauge after you've blocked the gauge swatch. And even though this doesn't look as wide right now, it's going to get wider when we block it. Because when we block, of course, when we, you know, we're going to kind of stretch it a little bit. And it's, it's kind of bunched up on the needle anyway. So we're going to be working a very, very simple um, kind of a ribbing type of stitch pattern. So what we're going to be doing is for rows one to four, we're going to knit one, purl one all the way across. So knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, 
all the way across until we've done all the stitches in the row. Alright, so that is my first row. And for rows 2, 3, and 4, I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm just going to knit one, purl one all the way across for um, another three rows because I already did the first one. So rows 1 to 4, we knit one, purl one all the way across. So I just did row 1, and now I'm going to do row 2, which is exactly the same. So there's row 2, and like I said, row 3 and 4 are going to be exactly the same. Alright, so that is row 4. So if we look at our work right now at this point, it just looks like one by one ribbing, and it is. So for rows 1 to 4, we did knit 1, purl 1 all the way across. Now we're going to reverse it and do the opposite. We're going to purl 1, knit 1 all the way across. So we're going to create another section of ribbing that is offset from the section we've got so far. So for rows 5 to 8, we're going to purl 1, knit 1 across. So just purl 1, knit 1, purl 1, knit 1, purl 1, knit 1, and etc. Alright, so there's row 5, and now I'm going to repeat the same thing for rows 6, 7, and 8. Alright, so that was row 7. I still have to do row 8, which is exactly the same. But I just wanted to show you, before I get to row 8, um, how you would count rows in this pattern and know um, which row you're supposed to do next if you have to set it down and then pick it back up later. If you don't remember what row you were on, then first of all you need to look at the first stitch of the row and see if it was a knit stitch or a purl stitch. So if your first stitch of the row was a knit stitch, then you'll know that you were repeating um, the row for rows 1 to 4. If it's a purl stitch at the beginning, then you know that whatever row you were just on was one that was repeating rows 5 to 8, or the, the row that we use for row 5 to 8. And you'll notice that each of those two rows the knit one, purl one row, and the purl one, knit one row are both worked four times before switching back to the other one. So if you notice right here, I'm going to look at my knit columns. So I know that the last row I knit started with a purl stitch. So that way I can tell that I was working the second row, you know, of the, of the two that we're repeating. So it was the rows five to eight row. And I can look at my knit columns in this little section and see that I have one, two, three stitches, knit stitches, in each knit column right now. So I've done three rows of whatever sequence that I was doing. So I was doing the purl one, knit one sequence, and I was, I had just finished the third row because there are three stitches in each knit column right now. And if you flip it over and look at the purl columns, it's the same. Three stitches in each purl or knit column for that little section. So I know that I still need to work that purl one knit one row one more time because we're repeating um, each of those two sequence rows four times a piece before we switch back to the other one. So I'm going to repeat that one more time for row 8 as the pattern describes. Alright, so that is row 8, and it's still kind of scrunched up on the needle. But if we spread this out a little bit, you can better see the texture of the stitch pattern at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to just basically make this rectangle longer. So we're going to continue repeating rows 1 to 8 until our piece is the correct length. Now if you want you can make it a little longer or a little shorter depending on your preference. Um, I would suggest just you know stopping when you think it's long enough and then putting it around your neck and kind of holding it up to test out um, what length you want it at. And you can stop whenever you know it, whenever it's a good length for you. But I'm going to continue repeating rows 1 to 8 until my rectangle is the correct length according to what the pattern specifies. 
All right, so I have continue repeating rows one through eight until I have a total of 88 rows. So now we're going to work the last few rows and that includes the buttonhole. So we're going to go ahead and work those last four rows with the buttonhole built in to the first row that we're gonna work. And you'll also want to take note that the last uh, row that I did was row eight. So now it can just seamlessly continue on into the next four rows because they are very similar to rows one to four, except for the buttonhole. So to make that buttonhole, we're going to start by knitting one, and then we're going to purl two together. So that means I'm gonna bring my yarn to the front of the work, and I'm gonna insert my needle as if to purl into the next two stitches. So I've got my needle inserted into two stitches here, and then I can wrap the yarn around and pull it back through. And that just turned two stitches into one. So that was a purl two together. And now we're going to make up for that stitch we just decreased by making a yarn over. And that yarn over is going to count as a stitch, of course, but that's going to make the buttonhole. So we have a knit one, a purl two together, yarn over, and then purl one, like so. So here's where our buttonhole is going to be. And once we uh, work across that yarn over on the next row, then yes, the buttonhole will be big enough for the one, the one and one eighth inch button. So now I'm just going to continue to knit one, purl one, all the way across until I get across the entire row. All right, so that is the end of the row. That was row nine, by the way. So for rows 10, 11, and 12, we're going to just be working um, the same row over and over again where we knit one, purl one, all the way across. Um, the buttonhole row that we just did is really the only one that's any different from the rest of the fabric. So for rows 10, 11, and 12, I'm just going to knit one, purl one, all the way across. And as we approach this buttonhole, the yarn over, I just wanted to show you that we are not doing anything special to this. We're just working into it um, like normal and we are purling into it because that was, that was the stitch that we should do for the sequence. And that creates that yarn over hole that our button will be able to slide through. So that was row 10. And again, I'm going to repeat that same thing for 11 and 12. All right, and this is the end of row 12. So now we're just going to bind off all the way across. And you can bind off in pattern if you want where you knit all the knit stitches and purl all the purl stitches, but it is totally fine to just do a knit bind off all the way across. So that's what I am going to do. So I've knit the first two stitches. I'm going to pass the first one over the second one. And again, I'm doing this loosely so that it's not too tight or too, um, it won't inhibit the stretch of this edge. So again, knit a stitch and pass the first stitch over the second one. Knit a stitch, pass the first stitch over the second one, working loosely so that it's not too tight. And just doing this all the way across to bind off all our stitches. All right, here is that last stitch. And now we're just going to cut the yarn and tie off. Like always, you wanna leave a little bit of a tail so that you can weave it in. And then we'll just pull that yarn tail through the last loop on the needle. So basically what we're gonna do now is weave in our tails. I only have two here because when I joined my second ball of yarn, I used a spit splice, which um, kind of felt the ends of the yarn together. And I do have a video on that if you haven't um, seen that technique before, I'll put it in the description box. But anyway, I only have two tails to weave in, so I'm gonna go ahead and weave those in. And then we need to block our rectangle before we go ahead and add the button and kind of assemble it 
to make it into our cowl. And I am using a wool yarn. This is 100% wool. So I'm going to go ahead and spray block my piece. And to do that, I'm going to kind of pin it slightly stretched out onto some foam blocking mats. And you want to pin it out um, so that it matches the finished, uh, correct finished dimensions of the rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it out on my, on my blocking mats and then spray it with water until it's all wet and let it dry. And blocking is not always required with every single yarn, but I especially want to do it with this yarn because this yarn is kind of dense and rope-like. It's like a single ply yarn and it's still bulky weight, but it doesn't have like that squishy airiness to it that some other bulky weight yarns have. This is more of a dense rope-like yarn. And so it kind of has like a, a, a tendency to contract tighter and it's a dense fabric right now. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, block it and that will help with the drape, with the pliability of the material. And it will also help make sure that it's even because right now I can kind of like pull on it to stretch it like that and it'll kind of stay but then the other sections are still kind of in their shrunk um, state. They're still kind of shrunk in width and blocking that will help fix that problem. So I'm going to go ahead and weave in my ends and block my cowl and then I'll show you where and how I'm going to add the button. Alright, so my cowl is blocked and I've got my button ready to go here. I've got a length of scrap yarn in a color that kind of matches. This is um, this is gray and my yarn kind of has some gray in it but this is a thinner yarn that um, we'll be able to sew the button on with because the button has much smaller holes than what the, uh, the, the really chunky yarn would fit through. So we're going to position the button and sew it on with this uh, yarn needle and this piece of scrap yarn and you want to make sure that your yarn needle has a small enough eye that it will fit through the holes of your button. So over here is the corner with my buttonhole. This is the, the, the cast off edge or the bind off edge right here. There's the buttonhole. We're going to go to the opposite end and we are basically going to find approximately the center of this uh, cast on edge and sew the button to, um, to the center area about an inch and a half in from the edge. So I'm going to fold this edge in half to find the approximate center. And then I'm going to come in about an inch and a half. So I'm going to place my button right about here. So what I'm going to do is I do have my, um, my yarn threaded double onto my yarn needle. That is optional. That's just how I've chosen to do it. But basically we're going to sew this on the way you would normally sew on a button. However, um, however many holes are in your button will affect it a little bit. But when I pull the yarn through, I'm coming up through the bottom of the fabric and through one of the holes in the button and I'm leaving a tail and I'm going to hang on to that and use it later to um, tie off my button sewing yarn. So I'm going to sew mine in a crisscross pattern. But if your button has only two holes or it has four holes and you want to do, you know, two straight lines to sew it on, go for it. Sew it on however you want as long as it is securely attached and it's not going to be, you know, loose or anything so it won't fall off. So now I'm going to turn it over to the underside and tie the yarn tail together with the, um, the current yarn that's attached to my needle. And then I can go ahead and weave in both of these tails. Now I want to kind of try to keep the weaving in um, around the area of the button. And that's, this is why we pick a yarn, a scrap yarn that's going to kind of match because you don't want it to show through too much.
All right, so here's what our cowl looks like at this point. At one end, we have a button in the center, and at the other end, we have a button hole at one corner. So what will happen here is we're going to kind of fold it down on the diagonal like that, and then when we wrap it around the neck, we will go ahead and button it through, um, through the buttonhole, and it will fold kind of like this around the neck. Now obviously it's not going to look exactly like this because this is laying flat on the table, but you get the idea of approximately how this will lay when it is worn. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.